is irresponsible. The public school teachers don't even want the bill. They're not even asking you for this. We just passed legislation to have SROs in every school. Can we see if that works yet? I'm upset, not out of because I don't like you all individually, because I'm mad because this bill puts my child at risk. And all the mothers out here that just got put out, they're saying their children at risk. Look at that gallery. They're asking you not to do this. Put partisan politics aside. I ask you this all the time, but this bill is dangerous. Don't do it. Teachers don't want it. The school districts don't want it. Nobody doesn't want it. It's not going to work. It's going to cause more school shootings. What happened today is a gallery full of mothers who are concerned, and we put them out because you're trying to put guns in teachers' hands. We ought to be ashamed, Mr. Speaker. That was the scene in the Tennessee Senate this week. State Senator London Lamar with her eight-month-old baby and a microphone in her hands begging Republicans not to vote to put more guns in schools. Yes, more guns, not less. This week, Republican lawmakers in Tennessee advanced legislation that would allow some teachers to carry concealed guns. Last April, just days after three children and three staff members were killed in a mass shooting at the Covenant School in Nashville, Donald Trump gave a speech pushing for armed teachers. And so a year later, Tennessee Republicans have decided that their solution to gun violence in schools is more guns in schools. During this week's legislative hearing, there were vocal protests against the bill before state troopers. State troopers removed those protesting from the Senate gallery. Also in the Senate were parents of survivors of the Covenant School shooting. The Tennessean reports Beth Gebhard watched the Senate proceedings Tuesday with tears in her eyes, alongside several other mothers of students at the school. She said her children, 9-year-old Ava and 12-year-old Hudson, survived the shooting because of well-trained teachers and police officers doing their job. She can't imagine a teacher having to also deal with confronting a shooter, especially one armed with an assault-style rifle. A handgun will do nothing against that. If what had happened on March 27th had gone down the way that it did with a teacher armed with a handgun attempting to put the perpetrator out, my children would likely be dead. The Tennessee House of Representatives is expected to vote on the bill on Monday. Joining us now is Democratic State Representative Justin J. Pearson of Tennessee and Tennessee mom Beth Gebhardt. Her children attend the Covenant School in Nashville. I want to thank the both of you for being here. You're both obviously concerned about the future of the children in Tennessee. Beth, I want to start with you. I can't imagine you have a nine-year-old and a 12-year-old. They still attend Covenant School. You were at that Senate hearing. You were a part of that gallery. They, the mothers, the parents, they were removed when they were speaking out about wanting to protect their children? It was appalling. It was truly the most outrageous experience I have had um, in, in my life, really. There was just such a level of confusion and pain and um, just we felt discarded. Um, there, it, it was just bizarre and painful. Representative Pearson, I know that you're familiar with the being silenced when you're trying to speak out um, in that mm -hmm. in that hall. But what is the justification that is coming from your colleagues on the other side of the aisle to vote on a bill and approve it? That is not wanted by anyone. It's been tried before in some other counties in Tennessee, hasn't worked. And I understand there's an opt out in this legislation, but and I understand maybe that the, the, the voices in support of this say, well, there's training and there's, you know, a certain component of it. But how is it possible that they're so tone deaf about what's really wanted to protect the children in these schools? 
This is a dangerous piece of legislation that puts at risk every child in our schools, including putting our teachers at risk as well. You don't have a single teacher in our district or in this state uh, who are asking the legislature to pass this type of legislation, and they certainly aren't asking for us to do it uh, by kicking out mothers uh, from the galleries and those who are advocating on behalf of their kids uh, in the process. What we are seeing is the cowardice of the Republican Party uh, in our state refusing to address the epidemic of gun violence which is the number one killer of our children. And instead of ending the epidemic by doing something about the guns that are being uh, proliferated in our communities and doing something that would stand up to the National Rifle Association, the Tennessee Firearms Association, they're attacking parents and they're actually making our schools less safe. They're bringing guns into gun-free zones. And this is only going to have horrendous ramifications for children who will access these uh, weapons and these guns, for teachers who might accidentally harm or shoot their students. Y'all, these are the real challenges that are going to come from this terrible legislation. Beth, I, I don't know what you think about now when you think about your children being in a classroom where, despite best efforts, accidents happen, as the representative talked about. But more importantly, you've had to live through the trauma of a school shooting for your two children. They've had to go through that trauma, and they blessedly survived it. You've spoken about the fact that these teachers were focusing on the kids and making sure that they stay safe. These teachers were not focusing on, let me grab a gun and try to get into a shootout in a hallway at the kids' classroom or in the school. I spoke with my son's teacher about that day. My son was in the second grade. He was adjacent to the third grade where most of the um, shooting and damage occurred. Um, and in talking to her about this, she explained that in that circumstance, there was absolutely no way that she was gonna leave 14 innocent children alone to go, you know, confront the, the gunman. The bottom line is that, that our educators need to be educators. They do not need to also mm -hmm. wear the hat of a law enforcement officer. It does not make any sense. And it would have been utterly terrifying for my child. When I think about him and how much he needed her, she told me that in that time, she went to bring the shade down. And the shooter, she, the back of the shooter, he, she, she was in the hall. She was right there. And our teacher knew in that moment, her one job was to keep herself silent and her children silent. And that's what they did. They practiced breathing. They watched her breath go in and out, her chest rise and down. And she just told them to follow her and they held hands and they waited it out. If she had left mm -hmm. that room, there is no doubt in my mind, my children would not have survived. I'm. I have a nine-year-old who's in third grade. I, I don't even know how you're able to, to share this. I'm grateful that you are. And then I hear this, and, you know, Representative, I want to harp on this for our viewers to, to understand. Mothers like Beth Gebhardt, who, who talk about this experience, they're being silenced. These are not politicians, right? These are not these are not lobbyists for for anti-gun or anti-Second Amendment kind of propositions. These are parents that only want to keep their kids safe, and yet they're being silenced. They're being removed from a public forum because they just want to share their concerns about really flawed and dangerous policies and legislation that's getting passed in your states. This is the way that the Tennessee Republican Party works. They silence the voices of dissent in order that they can corrupt, be corrupt, and use their power and be corrupted absolutely using it. And they wield it against anybody that they believe is going to stand up against them. This is why Representative Jones and I were expelled. This is why the mothers are consistently being kicked out of the gallery and kicked out of committee rooms, even during our special session to address public safety. They are not interested in the safety of our kids. They're not interested in the safety of our teachers. They do not want to end the gun violence epidemic. They only want to proliferate it with bad policies and legislation that is supported by 
by the Tennessee Firearms Association and supported by the National Rifle Association. They are not interested in making our community safer. And we have a responsibility to continue to show up. And I think Beth and all the mothers, like Mothers Over Murder and other organizations that are standing up in this moment to say that there has to be a better way and that this is not the way for us to move forward. But this is on par with how the Republican Party abuses its power. This is not new to me. It is not surprising to me. Uh, the removal of people from the galleries anytime that they sometimes are clapping or that they're speaking up in a building that their tax dollars pay for. The Republican Party, Cameron Sexton, William Lambert, they work hard, uh, uh, McNally, Lieutenant Governor McNally, to silence those voices of dissension. And that leads to really terrible and awful legislation that is going to lead to more kids losing their lives to being passed and being pushed through uh, in our state house. Representative, you know, so what is the solution? The solution first for this bill is it does not need to go forward. We need to vote this down and we need to listen to teachers. We need to listen to parents. We need to listen to those who are saying, let's make our community safer. We need to pass safe storage laws. We need to prevent guns from ever getting to the schoolhouse door by preventing people from being able to access weapons of war and being able to get weapons in our state and firearms in our state without even having a permit or taking any educational classes. There are so many research driven and database things that we could do to make our community safer and end the police proliferation of guns and uh, the epidemic of gun violence. But the Republican Party first need to be humble enough to listen and realize they've gotten this wrong and they've made our state and our communities and our schools a lot less safe. Beth, my apologies. I did not realize that I had cut you off. Please, uh, the last word. No, well, I wanted no, to first thank Representative Pearson. We are all so grateful for people like mm. him that are speaking up for um, <laughs> for what we all want to see happen. Uh, what I was gonna add is that for me, this is new. It's not new for him, it, it is very new for me. I have unfortunately, I think, put a lot of trust in our elected officials to be reasonable, to be the voice of uh, the all of us. Um, and what I have seen is appalling. It is as though, mm -hmm. A confederacy of dunces is is at work here. They are passing laws that we have to live by and die by, and it is appalling. It's outrageous. And so um, I would add that next week there is, like he said, an opportunity. You know, it it may be up for vote through the House, mm -hmm. and um, if if folks like me. <laughs> in the state of Tennessee recognize that this law is dangerous and should not be made into law, they can text TN to 64433, 64433, and then it'll walk you right through it. It'll seamlessly connect you to a law and um, hopefully, and just say, you know, we want to vote no on House Bill 1202. Tennessee Democratic Representative Justin Pearson and Beth Gebhardt, thank you both so much for being here and for spending the time with us on this important topic. I appreciate both of you very much. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. We've got to keep fighting. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.